presenting The Broken Coin, another in a series of radio plays based on stories featured in the American Weekly, the magazine which is distributed to all Hearst to Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. The Broken Coin was produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company. That section of Paris, known as Montmartre, and once famous for its nightlife and gaiety, is plunged in gloom. The playground of the world, as Parisians proudly called it, has become as lively as a burial ground. One quiet evening recently at the Chat Noir, one of the more ill-famed of night restaurants in the Rue Pigalle, Suzette Claudier, one of the ladies of the evening to be found there, is sitting alone at a table, idly turning a wine glass between her fingers as she meditates under the spell of the music of the cafe violinist. Mademoiselle Suzette? Mademoiselle Suzette? Eh? What is it? Oh... What can I do for you, ma chérie? I'm a recarté. This is my first evening here. And Madame Lafleur said you'd tell me what I'm supposed to do. She said I'd tell you, eh? Yes. <laughs> How well she knows where to send you. Nobody in the Rue Pigalle has been an entrepreneur as long as I have. Well, what do you want to know, ma chérie? I, I don't know, mademoiselle. All the Madame said was to see you. Very well, I'll start at the beginning. We try to get as much money out of the patrons as they have. The more you can wheedle, the more money you make. Is that clear? Yes, mademoiselle, she's there. As soon as the patron arrives, you're to rush to him and overwhelm him with attentions and dazzle him with your charms. And your perfume, you understand? I think I do. In preparing for your evening's work, Marie, see to it that you use a heavy, sensuous perfume. The patron will be sure to breathe its fragrance as you bend over his shoulder. I understand. Then when you're seated with him, you have a sudden thirst and hunger. That's your stock in trade, ma chérie. Your professional appetite. But if I have to eat and drink with a patron, what shall I do when another comes in? That is where the skill comes in. You only pick at the food. And the eagle-eyed waiter will see to it that it doesn't stay on the table long. But what about the drink? Let the patron drink most of the bottle. I'd let him think that you helped considerably. But suppose he notices that I haven't? Hmm? You distract his attention by being very demonstrative. You kiss him and put your arms around his neck. As you do... The waiter will substitute another bottle, which has been diluted. Then suppose the patron refuses to buy more than one bottle. For that type of patron, we have a special technique. You see this vial? Yes. What's in it? A powder, which will make him forget for a while. You mean poison? A sleeping potion. Of course, if a little too much is dropped into his glass. The sleep will be a little longer than intended. Oh, how awful. Oh, don't be shocked, Mary. It's a common thing here in Momat. But supposing the glasses get mixed? Suppose uh, I... It would only put you to sleep, ma chérie. With me, it would be different. My heart would never stand it. One glass and two finis. Oh, Suzette, have you ever administered... A special treatment? Oh, yes, a few times. Oh, I never could do that. You won't have to, Sherry. Do that, we'll take care of that for you. All I'm supposed to do, then, is to get patrons to buy food and drinks? As far as the cafe is concerned. But there's a pretty penny to be gained for yourself in other ways. How? Tell the patron a sad story. You have an aged mother to support, a ring you wish to get out of the pawn shop because of sentimental reasons. Or you have an overdue... Rent bill to be paid. Will he give me money if I do? Try it. You'll get twice as much as you ask for. Maybe I can do that. I'll try to do that. <laughs> You're a pretty little thing. How old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen. Just the age I was when I left the convent. Were you in a convent too? Yes. I was sent to a convent when I was a young girl. My father used to come and see me on holidays. You see, my mother died when I was small. Then, when I was about 18, father's visit suddenly stopped. You mean he died? That's what the mother superior thought. I remember one evening, just at Vesper. Who's there? Yes, Reverend Mother. I have something to say to you. Come in here a moment. Yes, Mother. Suzette, 
Your father hasn't been in touch with you, has he? No, Mother. He hasn't been in touch with us, either. He used to come on all the holidays. It's strange his visits have stopped so suddenly. Is it not, Suzette? He may be ill, Mother. In that case, I think he would have notified us in some way. Perhaps... Perhaps he went away on a business trip. Perhaps. But I think him... You must be brave, my child. I think he has passed on. Oh... Oh, no, no. Yes, my child. I know it is a shock to you. There's no other way to look at oh. it. Now, the funds your father left for your education are nearly depleted. Oh. Have you any other relatives to whom you can turn for assistance? No. No, Mother. I... If... If Father has passed on, I... I'm alone in the world. There are two ways open to you. Enter the convent as a sister, or take what money is left and seek your fortune in the world. I shall give you a little time to think it over. Uh, you may go into Vespers now. Very well. Reverend Mother. You took the money, of course. Yes. The Mother Superior gave me what was left. And a few trinkets my father had left in her care. Among them was this. A half a coin. A thing. My father took the first money he earned after he was married and broke it into two pieces. One part he gave to my mother, the other he kept himself. For oh, good luck. This was her half of the coin. And you've kept it ever since. Has it brought you luck? Not the luck I hoped for. You see, I've never given up looking for my father, but I've never found him. Of course, since I've become what I am, I've decided that it's no use. I'd never find him in a place like this. I... Well, enough of my troubles. You'd better not let Madame Lafleur see us gabbling like this. Poor Susie. You've had a lot of sorrow in your life, haven't you? I look pretty old, don't I? You've had a great deal of trouble. People who suffer a great deal do look older, you know. Uh -huh. You're a dear to be so tactful. You don't have to be. Here, you two. Get busy. Mary, I sent you over here to get the point of not to sit and chat all night. Move on. Yes, Madame Lafleur. Oh, it's my fault I kept her. You should know better, Suzette. But I haven't time to scold now. See that elderly gentleman at that table over there? Oh. You want me to go to work on him? Yes. One of the waiters tells me he has a large roll of money with him. If we don't get it, somebody else will. Hurry now. All right. Bonsoir, monsieur. Mm, bonsoir. You, uh, you look lonely over here by yourself. Wouldn't you like a little company? I don't mean sit down, won't you? Yes, you, monsieur. Wait up. You look tired. Are you? A little. But that is because I've been sick with jungle fever. Oh. I've been away from Paris for a number of years. Indeed. Is it? Champagne, waiter. Will it? Yes, it's been a long time. Have you ever searched for someone and not found them? Why, why, yes. Yes, I have. Then you know how I feel, discouraged, disappointed. I know. Tell me about it. You see, when I went away, I didn't have a chance to let anyone know where I was going. The opportunity to make a fortune in mining gold came to me so suddenly. Then, when I was able to get in touch with friends and relations, it was too late. That was too bad. Your family must have been frantic. I had only a daughter. I don't know what became of her. Perhaps she's married and has children of her own by now. Perhaps. Or maybe she went in for a career of some kind. You know, I like to think of her as being famous, even though I shall probably never meet her face to face. Well, it's quite possible she might be famous, isn't it? Oh, of course, of course. I, I'm sure she's what you dream her to be. I don't suppose I'd ever know her if we did meet. It's been so many years. I'm sure she'd recognize you, monsieur. Uh, I hardly think so. The fever has changed my appearance a great deal. There's only... One way we could ever recognize each other. What is that, monsieur? A birthmark of some kind? No. By this. Oh. 
Uh, a half a coin. Odd, isn't it? Well, my daughter has the other half, oh. wherever she may be. Excuse me, she yes. asked. Madame Lefer wishes to speak to you. I'll sit with the gentleman while you're gone. Yes, yes, I must. I must see Madame. Excuse me, Monsieur. Certainly. What's got in here this evening, Suzette? You've done nothing but talk, talk, talk. Yes. Yes, madam. Now, the gentleman evidently isn't going in for drinking this evening. We'll have to put him to sleep some other way. The father? Oh, no, no. Don't be a fool, Suzette. Why, you've never acted this way before about the powders. What's the matter? But I... I... Oh, nothing, madam. Very well, then. You'll do as I say. Give the gentleman the powders you mean? That's already been taken care of. Madam! See? The waiter's placing the champagne glasses on the table even now. Oh. The one in front of him contains the slumber potion. A generous one, by the way. Oh, no, no! What's wrong with you tonight, Suzette? If your gentleman has a weak heart like you, can I be blamed? I, I must get back to the table at once, madam. But certainly. Get his wallet. Be sure you get his money before he leaves here. Understand? I'll be working for you in my room. Oh, you're back, Celia. Yes, I, I'm back. You can leave us, Mary. Of course. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Bonsoir, Mademoiselle. <laughs> well, Mademoiselle Suzette, shall we drink a toast? Wait. Uh, wait, Monsieur. Eh? Yeah? Why are you changing the glasses? Well, uh, this one is full of you. You ought to have it. No, no, here. You keep it. Oh, please, please. Please change with me, Monsieur. Why are you so insistent, well, Mademoiselle? I, I've told you this one is full of... <laughs> Well, I'll drink this one, thank you. Oh, no. Here, what are you doing? Stop. That's mine you're drinking. Yes, yes. But, and, and now, my own. Now you must go, monsieur. Be for your life. I don't understand. Not for your money. If you don't go now while the madame is out of the room, you'll never go out alive. This is a wicked place, monsieur. You're in great danger. Why should you warn me like this? Because you're... Because you're an old man. You've suffered enough. You don't deserve to die like this. Now go, go quickly. But mademoiselle... Oh, do you hear me? Go, go at once. Very well, but what about you? Oh, I shall be all right. Now. As you please. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir, monsieur. And God bless you. Suzanne. Why, why, what's the matter? You're quite a scare. Yes. What is it? Are you ill? Oh, madame. Madame. My father, you think me strange. You must always think me so. But I found him. I found him. The radio drama which you just heard was inspired by an exclusive story appearing in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly Magazine. You'll find it under the title, Dismal Deserted Resorts of Gay Perry Nightlife. This is but one of the many interesting true life stories and articles appearing in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine which is distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. This is Wentworth announcing and wishing you in behalf of the American Weekly and the entire Hearst organization the very happiest of all New Year's. Full details concerning the many stories and articles to be found in next Sunday's American Weekly will now be given to you by your own announcer.
Ladies and gentlemen, with this program, the American Theater of Radio inaugurates a new series of radio plays to be known as Front Page Dramas. These weekly features come to you through the courtesy of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Front Page Dramas are based on real-life stories, drama, tragedy, comedy, and pathos, all the...